Rational expressions and functions, 4.3. So, first ones, we're just doing some simplifying, just kind of some getting practice there. So when we only have one term on the bottom, we just look for what we can pull out from every single piece. Okay, in other words, we're saying, okay, can I pull a 2x out of this, this, and this? And the answer is yes, because 8 is really like x cubed is... 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x. 4x squared is 2 times 2 times x times x. And then 2x is just 2 times x. So we've got 2s and x's that we can pull out of each one of those. So we'd have 2x times all of this over 2x. 2 times 2 would give us 4x squared minus 2x minus, now when there's nothing left over, think of it as times 1, so it'll be times 1. So those cancel, leaving us with just the 4x squared minus 2x minus 1 as our answer. Number 2, same idea. Okay, we can pull a 2 out of all of these, leaving us with a negative 2, because the 2's would cancel out x cubed, because we didn't have any x's, minus 5x squared plus x. And that's really as simple as we can go. Now, if we're looking at this one, domain and range, it's a quadratic, right? So I know that at some point, it's looking something like this. Okay, which means our domain, it's going to keep going right and keep going left. So our domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range, we need to figure out how far down it goes, right? That's really what it comes down to for the range. To do that, we need to know where the vertex is. Um, and there's a, a quick little way you can do it when you have standard form on a quadratic. It's negative b over 2 times a. So a negative 2 would turn into a positive 2 over 2 times 4. So it would be 2 times 8, which is 1 fourth. So at the x value of 1 fourth, that's where our vertex is. Then to figure out its y value, we just plug in 1 fourth into our equation. And then let's see, 1 squared, 2 squared, so 1 16th, or 4 squared. 4 times that. That's like 4 times 4, so those cancel out. We're left with 1 fourth minus 2 times that would be 2 fourths minus 1. 1 minus 2 would give us negative 1 fourth minus 1 would give us negative 1 and a fourth. Okay, so about from negative 1, our range would go from negative 1.25 to infinity. Okay, now if we're dealing with a cubic, we should remember cubics, the basic shape is like that. This one's a negative, so it's going to go the opposite direction. But it keeps going right, left, down, and up, so it's negative infinity to positive infinity on both the domain and the range. All right. Okay, three and four, got to do a little bit more work to simplify these ones, right? I'm going to need to factor this first, so I get x minus 9 over, now we're going to factor that. So factors that add up to negative 18, multiply it at positive 81. Got to be x minus 9 and x minus 9. So one of those cancel out, that whole piece, right? So think of it as times 1, so we're left with 1 over x minus 9. Okay. And when we're looking at this one, for the domain and range, we'll talk more about it when we talk about graphing. But this right here tells us that if we had x equals 9, 9 minus 9 would give us 0. You can't have 0 on the bottom. So the domain would not work where x equals 9. But the domain would basically be negative infinity to positive infinity with that exception of 9. That would be kind of the, the part that doesn't work. And the range, same idea except for a 
horizontal asymptote that would be at the x-axis. All right, number four. But if you don't have the domain and range of these ones, that's fine because it can be kind of complex. So we've got x squared minus 4. Remember, that's the difference of squares. So x squared minus 2 squared translates to x plus 2 times x minus 2. That's the special case. Factors of x squared plus 4, x plus 4, be x plus 2 and x plus 2. So those cancel out. We get x minus 2 over x plus 2. The main and range is kind of similar to this one over here. There's going to be a vertical as or horizontal asymptote at 1, which is going to affect the range because it'll go down and it'll go up, but it won't pass through that part. And then for the uh, negative 2 would be where the vertical asymptote, it goes left and right, but there's going to be that. But once again, I said we will talk more about this graphing stuff, so I'm not too concerned about the domain range on these ones. All right, multiplying and dividing rational expressions in each problem, multiply or divide. Um, you don't necessarily need to find the domain. I'm looking more that we can multiply and divide. So remember, multiplication, we just multiply across. Now we can start trying to cancel things out because it's multiplication. You can think of them together. So I could cross out a 10, and I've got three ends up top, three ends on the bottom, and we'd be left with 2 over 5. Okay, and number six, with division we have to get the reciprocal of the second, and then we can multiply. We can't start canceling out yet. So then we end up with 25v squared over 32, which we can't simplify that, so we leave it how it is. Okay, the next one's that multiply, just think about extending that and multiplying these things together. And then we can cancel out m minus 6, m minus 6, m minus 4s. We will be left with m minus 2 over m minus 3. Okay, number 8, r plus 1 squared over r plus 3 times, we flip this, so this goes up top, 7r times r plus 7. This goes on the bottom, r plus 1 squared. You can cancel those two out. I don't see us being able to do anything else. So 7r times r plus 7 over r plus 3. If I really wanted to, I could multiply that in and go 7r squared plus 49r over r plus 3, but you don't have to. All right, just keep on going. We can probably simplify that so we get 10 over, we can pull a 10 out of that, right? 10 times k plus 7. And that we flip to times k minus 1 over 1 which the tens cancel, and that's pretty much it, right? So you get k minus 1 over k plus 7. For number 10, we can pull out 5, right? And a k squared, so 5k squared times k minus 10 times that 10k over 10k times we can pull out an 8, 8 times 3k minus 10. Oh, and that, if I pulled out, would be a 3k, wouldn't it? So 3k minus 10, 10k, so we're left with 5k squared over 8, which we can't reduce any further. So see, the multiplication division isn't too bad. You just got to simplify and then do what you can. So we get 7v on top pull out a 5 and a v, giving us v left over minus 8. Make that multiply, get the reciprocal. So times, now this bottom is like v squared minus 8 squared. When you have that difference of squares like that, it turns into, and we had to flip it, didn't we? So that should actually go on top. So times, 
v minus 8 times v plus 8. Over this one, we can pull out a 5 again. So we get 5 times v plus 8. So those cancel out, those cancel out. 5 times 5 gives us 25. The v's cancel out. So we get 7 over 25. So some of these can simplify pretty far down. Okay, number 12. So 21b minus 9. We don't need to, to factor those out. We can eliminate those right off the bat. And then we get 3b squared over b squared plus 3b minus 54 which we can try to simplify that bottom one into factors, but it's really not going to make a difference because it would be, let's see, factors of negative 54 that add up to positive 3, 9 and 6, so it would be b plus 9, b minus 6, which that doesn't do anything for, so you don't need to do that. You can, but you don't have to. All right, so 13, so now we got a lot of stuff going on here. So first of all, I know that I'm going to flip these. So I end up with the, the left side, which I want to simplify. n squared minus 11 plus 28. Factors of 28 that make up negative 11. Well, it could be n minus 7 times n minus 4. You can use a box method on these. Um, but these simple ones, you might be able to just go through like that and figure it out. Over, pull out a 9n squared, leaving us with n plus 10. And then we multiply that and flip. So this part, which is actually the same as this part, would be reduced the same, right? 9n squared times n plus 10. And then this top... Factors of negative 20 that add up to positive 1 be n minus 4 times n plus 5. So those cancel out because one on top, one on bottom. Those cancel out. The n minus 4 is canceled, leaving us with n minus 7 on top, n plus 5 on the bottom. So then we take a look at 14. Clear out some space. Same thing here. So we got a factor, this, 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 and this. So factors of 36 that add up to 13 would be so not 6 and 6, 9 and 4. Yep. So v plus 9 times v plus 4 would be that one. This one, we can pull out a 9. So times 9v, oh, not 9v. 9 times v minus 5 all over this one factors of 4 that add up to 5 would have to be v plus 4 times v plus 1 times factors of negative 45 that add up to 4 would be v minus 5 times v plus 9 so we've got a v plus 9 we cancel a v plus 4 we cancel a v minus 5 we cancel we're left with 9 on the top and v plus 1 on the bottom, which we can't simplify any further. All right, now just solve each equality. So for this one, it's already in factored form, so you just set each one equal to 0 separately. And then you solve each one. So we'd add 7 to get x equals 7, add 2 to get x equals 2, minus 5, to get x equals negative 5. So x equals negative 5, 2, and 7. Those are the zeros, right? Okay, number 16, first we have to factor this one, then we can do that. So factors that multiply to get 6, add to get 7. I've well, got to be x plus 6, not 7, and x plus 1, which stays equal to 0, so you set them separately equal to 0, and then you solve. And we just used factoring to figure out our roots, our zeros, our x-intercepts, those two right there. Okay, now with 17, when you're dealing with a fraction like this, okay, really, um, all I need to do is take the top number. So just like we multiply, if that factor was 0, it doesn't matter what those two are, the answer is 0. 
if the top is 0, it doesn't matter what's on the bottom. It's going to be 0. So I go negative x plus 2 equals 0. Add x to both sides. And I end up with 2 equals x, which would be my x-intercept, my factor. All right? So there we go.